Good morning and welcome to the What's Up News Network, being broadcast from Panama City Beach, Florida, the home of the world's most beautiful beaches. I am Jim Free with Jim Free Realty. Please help me out and click on the red subscribe button just below the picture. The condo report this morning, and please remember this is just kind of a reference report to let you know what's going on each day. Uh, we had five reports come in this morning. They were four new listings. One had an increase in price. There are presently 554 active units. 309 of those units are gut front units. There are five bedrooms. We have in the five bedroom category of condominiums, we have 10 available. Four bedrooms, we have 99 available. Three bedrooms, we have 174 available. Two bedrooms, we have 178 available. One bedrooms, 173. And studios, we have 191. Sold during the past 30 days, we had 154. 80 of those were gut front units. This is down by about 13. We had four, on the four bedrooms, we had 11 units sold. Three bedrooms, we had 231 sold. And the two bedroom, excuse me, two bedrooms, we had uh, 72 sold. One bedrooms, we had 50. And we had 74 studios that sold. In the detached single family, market we had we presently have 287 units available 18 of those are gut front units in the past 30 days there have been 116 gut front units sell in the attached single family market there is 98 units available uh, none of them are gut front in the past 30 days we have sold 40 and one of those were scuff front. From New York, real estate investors are scrutinizing second home markets as they hunt for growth opportunities even during the pandemic. After all, travel doesn't stop when the economy weakens, it just changes where people travel. A new report from rental management site Rental Incorporated and Wise Analytical notes in 2020, travelers want to stay close to home and they are seeking genuine experiences. Overall, the report found that Florida's Panhandle is the top vacation home investment area in the U.S. with an index of 98.7. Though Siesta Key and Miami Beach also made the top 20 out of the 100 cities, rated El Paso, Texas came in last with an index of 13.9. So this is good news for the Panhandle and Panama City Beach. It's one of the most desired areas in the country. The top 20, 20 U.S. vacation rental spots uh, in Florida, we had in the Panhandle area, it was 98.7. Then New Jersey came in second. Poconos in Pennsylvania was third. Smoky Mountains fourth. Five, uh, Central Texas seven, came in fifth. S six was Phoenix. Seven was Ocean City, Maryland. Eight was Siesta Keys, Florida. Nine was Charleston Mest Metro area. Ten was the Hampton Roads area. Eleven was Hudson Valley area, New York. Twelve was Leavenworth, Washington. Thirteen. Inland Empire, California, 14, the Adirondacks in New York, 15, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 16, Hamptons in New York, 17, Columbus, Ohio, 18, Portland, Maine, 19, Miami Metro Area, and 20, Omaha, Nebraska. So again, good news for us in the Panhandle area. COVID-19 cases increased. The cases now stand at 2,213 Bay County residents and 56 non-residents have had the virus. 
we've had 13 deaths according to the Bay County Health, uh, but according to the Bay County Health Department, we've had 11 deaths. So there continues to be a lot of discrepancies between the local health department and the the state, and then CDC. So we really don't know whether these people know how to add, or they're just purposely misleading the public on how many deaths and how many hospitalizations you have. On the on the state dashboard, we're shown as having 73 hospitalized, and of course that's the total uh, between the time we began. The age distribution of cases shows more new cases in the 25 to 34 age group. The medium age is 39 in Bay County. Pediatric cases are still low. The 85 plus age group is still the lowest group. The breakdown by gender is 1,050 males and 1,212 females. Breakdown by race is 1,213 white, 246 black, 114 other, and 640 unknown. Most of the cases in Bay County are actually located in the Panama City area and not the Panama City Beach area. There continues to be long lines at the county's drive through test centers. It's very difficult to give you accurate numbers because the news media try to report the most negative news they can find. The media cannot add and they distort the figures and the bureaucrats can't keep up with the data and they often over report the data. We're finding it very difficult when our local health department, our state reporting agency, the CDC, all have different numbers. We're trying to narrow those down and give them to you the best we can, but we can't guarantee the accuracy of any of them. On the local news scene, a 19-year-old Spring Hill, Tennessee resident was killed when the vehicle he was riding was involved in a head-on accident on Hutchison Beach Road between Alf Coleman Road and Richard Jackson Boulevard. The accident occurred around 1.30 in the morning. If you love the Apalachicola oysters, this is bad news for you, at least in the immediate future. Harvesting in Apalachicola Bay and Swanee Sound is suspended until December 19, or excuse me, December 2025. Historically, Apalachicola is known as the oyster capital of the world and is responsible for producing 90% of Florida's commercial oysters. Bay County Sheriff's Office has arrested four people in, in a, an investigation involving a, a stabbing that took place late Monday evening at the resort in Bay Point Community, Panama City Beach. Witnesses noticed the victim when he pulled a fire alarm to get help. Arrested were Dolores Olivia Penalbar, 37, Pablo Asturias, 43, Gregory Gabriel, Gonzalez, 25, and Destiny Christine Medina. And uh, according to the press release by, from the Bay County Sheriff's Office, that when they arrived on the scene, a young man with multiple stab and slash wounds bleeding profusely, Dep deputies began to administer aid until the EMS arrived. The victim initially stated he didn't know who had stabbed him, then stated it was a woman after speaking with several witnesses, investigators obtained a description of a vehicle with two women and a man that might possibly be involved. During the course of the investigation, a traffic stop was conducted on possible suspects on Magnolia Beach Road, Panama City Beach. A Bay County Sheriff's Office canine alerted to the presence of illegal narcotics in the vehicle and all the occupants were charged with possession of illegal narcotics. Tampa, Florida news, the seventh named storm of the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season has formed. Tropical Depression 7 became better organized overnight and strengthened into Tropical Storm Gonzalo with maximum sustained speeds of 45 miles per hour 
Just before 9 a.m. Wednesday morning, the storm is a small size and is moving the west-northwest at 12 miles per hour. It is forecast to move toward the Windward Islands by this weekend and then into the Caribbean Sea. The National Hurricane Center noted that the forecast track has a high level of confidence, but the strength forecast is much lower in confidence. Our hero for today uh, is close at hand. He was a DeSoto County Deputy Sheriff who was vacationing in Walton County over in Destin area. Uh, he died yesterday after saving his son in the water of a Floyd, uh, Florida beach. The Walton County Sheriff's Office says 33-year-old William Nichols was pulled from the water after saving his teenage son who was in distress. The son was able to make it back to shore, but the father was pulled back out into the water. It was a sad day when my cousin Brenda called and said that her husband Bart was divorcing her after 30 years of marriage. It seemed that Bart had fallen for his young secretary. Brenda was hoping to get the house in the settlement, but Bart hired the best divorce lawyer in town and he won the house. Bart only gave Brenda 30 days to get out of the house. On the last day, Brenda treated herself to two pounds of shrimp, a jar of caviar, and a bottle of Chardonnay. When she had finished, she took the uneaten shrimp and the shrimp shells, dipped them in the caviar. She then walked room to room, placing the shrimp in the hollow drapery rods, cleaned the kitchen, and left the home. Bart and his girlfriend moved in the next day, and everything was fine for a couple of days. But then the house began to smell. They had exterminators out, they cleaned the carpet, they sprayed the house, they checked under the house, but were unable to find the source of the smell. The smell was so bad that they had to move out of the house. They put their house on the market, but were unable to find a buyer. They reduced it to half its value and still no buyers and soon the realtor would not even return their calls. Brenda gave Bart a call to see how things were going, and Bart told her they were thinking about moving to another neighborhood. Brenda said she really missed the house and offered Bart about one-fourth of what the house was worth. He said he would accept if she would sign the papers the very, next, the very day. The next day, Brenda watched as the moving van backed up to the house and loaded all the furniture, including the curtain rods. Well, there you go. Thanks so much for sharing your time with me. And until we meet again, may God bless you and this great country we live in.